Naoya Inoue blasts out Jamie McDonnell in the first round to capture the WBA World Bantamweight title. Jamie McDonnell is not a fighter who I've ever paid much attention to. I have seen him fight a few times. I've never been impressed. I've never been entertained. I saw his two fights against Solis. The first fight was a controversial decision. The second fight ended in, what was it, a no contest or a no decision or something like that. And I've seen one or two of his other fights. He first won the title against Tomoki, uh, Tomoki Kamida, another Japanese fighter. But today or tonight, depending on where you are in the world, Inoue took that title back home to Japan that McDonald had been keeping warm for a couple years. This was actually the first time I've even seen Inoue fight. I'd heard a lot of good things about him, but I have to be honest, I tend not to pay too much attention to the flyweights and stuff like that. I don't usually find him as entertaining as at least, you know, super bantamweights, featherweights and up. So I've never watched Inoue until now, but he's definitely somebody I'll be keeping an eye on. Because he stepped up from super flyweight to bantamweight now. So it's more in the territory of fighters where I, I would actually watch. <laughs> so yeah, he looked good. He walked Jamie McDonald down. He was patient. He didn't just rush in recklessly. He was patient. He picked his spots. And he landed a good right hand on the top of Jamie McDonald's head. Which forced Jamie McDonald back into the corner. And then he launched a pretty brutal assault which resulted in McDonald hitting the canvas, I think, in the end from a body shot. McDonald got up. He looked pretty worse for wear. Anue trapped him against the ropes, unloaded another barrage. McDonald went down again. To be fair, most of the shots were blocked by McDonald, but a couple did get through. But as soon as he hit the canvas again, the referee was quick to wave it off. Was it a premature stoppage? Yes. Did it look like the fight was only going one way? Yes. But still, in a world title fight where the guy's the champion, you don't want to see them getting stopped that quickly. You know, you don't want the referee jumping in that quickly, not even giving the guy a count before waving it off. If that had happened in the UK, I'm sure people would be complaining. So, you know, same way it happened in Japan, that was a premature stoppage. At least give the guy a count and let him get up and see where he's at. It's not unprecedented in boxing for people to you know, for a fighter to uh, survive early knockdowns. Look at Nigel Benn against Gerald McClellan. Look at Juan Manuel Marquez in the first round against Manny Pacquiao in, in the first fight. So, you know, to wave it off that quickly, I I think is a bit off. But would I pick Jamie McDonald to win that fight based upon how the first round went? Hell no. Again, Jamie McDonald has never been a fighter that's impressed me. He's never been a fighter that's entertained me. Inoue, on the other hand, my first impression of watching him is a good one. I like the punch and power. You see, one of the things about a lot of these little guys is that they there's very few of them that have serious punch and power whereby they can damage their opponents significantly. You know, this guy's stepping up from super flyweight, but Inoue looks to be one of those outliers, one of those exceptions to the rule a very small guy with a very big punch and he really is a very small guy he was dwarfed by Jamie McDonald I know Jamie McDonald is very tall for the weight but still he was dwarfed by McDonald but just blasted him out <laughs> and I have to also talk about Jamie McDonald's attitude towards boxing shout out to Woody by the way he knows who he is shout out to him because Woody was talking about the fact that Jamie McDonald doesn't know anything about boxing. Like he's a guy that doesn't watch boxing. He's not interested in boxing. And he says so quite proudly and giggles about it. And Woody was saying that he hopes, he was saying this before the fight, that he hopes McDonald gets blasted out, gets knocked out, because that's what he deserves for being a boxer who doesn't even care to watch or study boxing. And that's his trade. Why, why the hell wouldn't you watch or study boxing? McDonald apparently doesn't like boxing. Now, McDonald's not the first fighter I've come across who has this attitude towards boxing. 
James Kirtland was another guy who had the same attitude. James Kirtland said he, did, he didn't really watch boxing at the time when he was still regarded as a legitimate contender. Sergio Martinez was the middleweight champion and Martinez was quite a big deal at the time. And Kirtland said he had no idea who Martinez was. This is a guy who don't watch boxing. <laughs> I find it incredible in this day and age when it, boxing is so accessible. You can go on YouTube and look up any of your opponents. You can go on YouTube and look up any of your competition, you know, if you're a world level fighter. So what's your excuse for not doing so? It's extraordinary to me that there are fighters out there who don't even watch the sport. Berman Stavern said that he don't watch heavyweights. You really have to question fighters like this. Berman Stavern and James Kirtland have never struck me as the sharpest tools in the box. And I haven't watched as many Jamie McDonald interviews as I have Stavern and Kirtland interviews, but, you know, judging by his attitude towards boxing, I wouldn't be surprised if he's not the sharpest tool in the box either. Saying that he don't watch it and he don't really like watching it and he, you know, doesn't know who anyone is. He's never watched the Muhammad Ali fight and it's like, jeez, man. <laughs> in this sport, the greatest fighters are the ones who actually love boxing. Tell me a great fighter who didn't love boxing. They love watching boxing. They're connoisseurs of boxing. The greatest fighters. They study it. They're obsessed with it. You can only go so far if you don't really love the sport like that. You might have certain ability. You might be able to learn certain things. And you might enjoy stepping in the ring. But if you don't enjoy watching the sport and learning things from other fighters, you can't have that much longevity at the top level. Not in this day and age. Maybe back in the days in the 20s and 30s when a lot of fighters didn't have access to fight films. So everyone was in the same position, basically. A lot of fighters, many fighters, probably the most fighters back then, had never seen a lot of boxing. Because a lot of fighters were poor. But today, it's not like that. And if Jamie McDonald ain't watching his opponents before he fights them, and his potential competition in the future, if he ain't YouTubing them, well, his opponents are YouTubing him. <laughs> you know, his opponents do study boxing. His opponents do like boxing. They do learn things from other fighters, different techniques, etc. You know? So you're putting yourself at a disadvantage by having this kind of attitude where you, you, you don't even watch the sport. It's incredible. Here's what it is. McDonald gets blasted out. He's no longer champion. And Inoue is going to be in the World Boxing Super Series Bantamweights. I believe it's going to be Bantamweights, not Super Bantams. So, yeah, looking forward to that. Ryan Burnett is going to be in it. Uh, who else is going to be in it now? Tete is going to be in it. Anuwe's in it. Should be good. Should be good. Let me know how you feel about McDonald's performance in the comment section below. Let me know how you feel about Anuwe. Again, first time I've seen Anuwe. I do tend to sleep on flyweights and super flyweights and minimum weights and all them kind of weights there. Don't really watch much of them. And I've seen some people say Anuwe is pound for pound, top five and all this kind of stuff. I just say, hold your horses talking about pound for pound, top 10 or top five. You know, one of the issues with flyweights and minimum weight, etc., is that there are very, very few fighters in those weight classes. Very few. Because there are very few men who are actually that small. And so it's a similar situation that you have with women's boxing. It's not as bad as it is with women's boxing. But it's a similar situation in that because there are so few fighters, how much pre how much uh, credit can you give a guy for being a champion in a division where th there are so few fighters? The competition can't be that deep. It can't be that fierce because there's so few of you, you know? Whereas a welterweight, it's a lot more difficult to be the top dog at welterweight. Way more difficult because there's far more competition. So... You have to take that into account before you start talking about Inoue as pound for pound, man. <laughs> you know, at least let's see him against the other bantamweights. 
and then we can start talking maybe pound for pound. Because at least at bantamweight, there's a hell of a lot more competition than there is at super fly or fly, you know. So let me know how you feel in the comment section below. It's happening. I'm out.